and it seems like we're all here. Uh, welcome to the Department of Theatre, Film and Television and welcome to the first AES event on gender equality supporting the United Nations campaign uh, called He for She to support gender equality. I spent the last few days wondering what I was going to tell you when I stood here and introduced the event. And I spent loads of long walks from here home thinking what I should say and what the right thing to say is, and wondering how much of a responsibility is to introduce an event that is so close to my heart and also so close to the hearts of many of the people here today. Last night, it dawned on me that what I wanted to tell you is that I wish I wasn't here, and I wish you weren't here today, or I'd rather wish we were here to talk about something else. We have today five wonderful professionals from the audio industry, and instead of talking about their wonderful achievements, we're going to be talking about a basic human right, the right to be considered because of your own merits and not because of gender. So it does sadden me that we cannot be here talking about something else. It's 2018 after all. It does, though, fill, fill me with joy to see you all here because we knew, need to have these conversations and we need to be here talking about gender equality. That is the first step we need to take. And until that changes, and I think we have a long road ahead of us, we will continue having these events and we're going to continue pushing for equality. In the last few months, I've been profoundly moved by the number of campaigns that have started in rise to challenges to inequality in the creative industries. The Me Too campaign has shown us how serious the problem of sexual harassment is, as millions of women have taken online platforms to say Me Too. And today, I'm sad to say Me Too, and I'm sad to say that I know if I asked many women here, they would say me too, too. Last week, BAFTA's red carpet filled with men and women wearing black in support of the Time's Up campaign, a campaign that supports uh, underrepresented groups so that they can achieve their full potential. Also last week, BAFTA, BFI and Equity joined forces to write guidelines against sexual harassment and bullying. So I have a feeling in my heart that things are changing and that we might be in the verge of a gender re revolution, which I'm very happy that we're all part of. But why AES and why He for She? The He for She campaign launched on the 20th of September 2014 with one of the most inspiring speeches in gender equality I've ever had the pleasure to hear. And that was a speech by Goodwill Ambassador Emma Watson, who if you've never heard her speak about equality, you should. She's a wonderful spokesperson. He for she invites everyone to take a stance on gender equality. It invites everyone to recognize that gender issues are not a woman's problem, that they are everyone's problems, and puts men at the center of taking responsibility for gender equality. The AES only has 5% of female membership. So to me, having a campaign, supporting a campaign that invites men to support equality and speak up in support of their female colleagues is incredibly important. Charlie Slee, uh, the past chair of the AES UK and myself, started working in supporting the He For She campaign in April last year. And we started by inviting people, uh, mainly AES members, but also people from the audio community, to sign an online pledge to the campaign, which after all takes two minutes and is free. You go online, you write your name, your email address, and you get a thank you email for committing to gender equality. You wouldn't imagine how hard it is to get people to do something that's free, but requires entering your name and email address. And I do appreciate the very recent and wonderful efforts that our York AES student section is doing to support the campaign. So thank you very much for all the work you do to support us. But I have a confession to make. When we decided to launch the campaign last year, I hid from my colleagues a fear, and was the fear that I knew we were going to get a backlash. I knew we were going to get criticism online. 
I didn't say anything because I knew they would get, they would get scared and suddenly they wouldn't want to campaign for gender equality because of the fear of getting bad publicity. But we launched the campaign and there weren't any issues, so I put that fear at bay until the Sunday 2nd of July. An email arrived at my inbox and many of you will be familiar with this text because it went viral as I posted it in its anonymized form. But I will read it to you because I'm assured that many of you don't know the story. And this is the email that came to my inbox as a response of an AES UK newsletter that I sent together with my male colleagues um, announcing our alignment to the He for She campaign, among other audio related matters. This person wrote the following. The latest AES UK newsletter says we're now formally aligned to a campaign to make a moral commitment to gender equality. It's not clear to me what the campaign stands for. If they're wanting a 50-50 gender balance everywhere, then well, just no. Recently, I went to a talk on marketing, which had hard evidence that typical male and female bra brains are different and respond differently. So in a job that needs the kind of skills you typically find in male brains, you're likely to find that the majority of workers are male. That's evolution. Deal with it. And there's no particular reason why it's a bad thing for the majority of engineers to be male. Unlike, for instance, primary school teaching, teachers being 90% female, which deprives the boys of role models. The other problem I have with that kind of campaign is that it's so one-sided. You don't get men campaigning to be allowed to join the Women's Institute, for instance, although their meetings often include talks on topics that are of general interest. Female students going up to Cambridge have the option of a single-sex college, males don't. However, if it's simply to make sure that, for instance, people aren't discriminated against, then it's a worthy aim. But I still feel uneasy about harnessing AES, a group that should be concentrating on engineering, to be a political campaign. Of course, it would be a good idea if there was a problem within our industry, but I really haven't seen evi any evidence that there is. It would be better to campaign against sound pressure levels that injure people's hearing. <laughs> I wish I was making this up, but this is the extent of the email I received on the 2nd of July. Of course, this person, as I'm sure you noticed, failed to see that he's a big part of the problem. And him not seeing evidence of the problem is because he is a representative of our very problem. What happened after that was unsurprising. The email went viral. Uh, we had a huge amount, overwhelming support uh, from many people of the audio community telling us how they were grateful we had shared the story because they got the stories to tell. They got emails like that, comments on a daily basis. Just to give you an example, last week, uh, a colleague from the audio community uh, said, I quote, you give me grief about gender equality. That's because I commented on his 100% male speaker lineup. So suddenly, it wasn't his fault, it was my fault, because I had pointed it out. So a lot of people in the audio community were grateful for raising this. But there were those that felt that the AES UK committee had sunk to the level of this person by sharing the information, even if it was verbatim. I was suddenly being accused of being discriminating against men. Uh, my Twitter account got comments of uh, uh, using positive discrimination for hiring, which I have never done in my life. So that wasn't a very nice thing to get as part of the campaign. But this person made us incredibly popular. <laughs> Posting this email made a, com a campaign even stronger. So I often wonder if I should run into him in the street, if I should actually thank him for making my campaign even better. What many people don't know is what was written back to this person. And it's because Charlie and I agreed on this between us and kept it amongst ourselves. But today I thought that our launch event uh, in preparation for International Women's Day is the day in which I would like to share our response to it. And the reason why I'm going to share this response to you because, is because it expresses 
the commitment ASUK has to gender equality and the fact that we're always going to keep fighting, doesn't matter what the backlash is. So this is what we wrote. And it was sent under my name. I'd say it's good to hear from you, but I think it's obvious that under the circumstances, I can't say such a thing, which saddens me, as you very well know how much work I do for the AAS. And it surprises me that an educated professional as yourself could have such narrow-minded views. Even then, I will go ahead and explain to you in the next few paragraphs a bit more about the campaign, and I hope you reconsider your views. It is a shame you didn't visit the he for she website because you would then have found out that the UN campaign works on gender equality for everyone. For example, challenging male stereotypes that have led to fewer men taking on parenting duties or boys not playing with dolls. I recommend you visit the website and find out more. I agree, boys, boys need male teachers as role models. Girls need female engineers as role models. It works both ways. You're quoting a marketing talk of scientific findings. I'd very much like to see their research and invite you to look into the work of University of York's Paul Walton, whose research says exactly the opposite. The arguments you're giving or that were given to you in that marketing talk very much resemble arguments used by people trying to defend racism. So I would consider where you get your data from. We will continue working on disseminating gender equality within audio through the AES. Your email shows me why we need to do this, and you have given me even more reasons to continue working. We will continue doing our excellent work on audio engineering plus gender equality work. Using your own words, I'm going to continue working on gender equality in the audio industry together with my colleagues. That is what evolution means, and you will need to deal with it. Only a few days ago, I had the great honor of becoming the first female chair of AES UK. And as the saying goes, with great power comes great responsibility. And I can assure you that the AES UK is fully committed to the cause. We're not paying lip service to the campaign. This is not about standing here and telling you how great gender equality is and then turning our back and doing something different in our actions. Our upcoming student event, Up Your Output, shows our commitment. People always tell me how difficult it is to have female engineers in events. I invite you to look at our speaker lineup and challenge those conceptions. We have a majority of female speakers from all sorts of paths of audio and careers. And we're incredibly proud that they're part of our event and that this is part of a student and recent graduate event that is hopefully going to provide the role models we need. We have so far received 123 pledges to the campaign, which we're very grateful for. There's 900 AES UK members. So this tells me we need to do much, much more work. So if you haven't signed the he for she pledge, please do sign it and share it with us. We then share it through social media and ask other people to do the same. We're confident that our work on gender equality is making the audio industry better. The He For She campaign says, together we're going to change the world. And as cheesy as that, as that might sound, I believe we are going to change together the world. Because after all, you're here in this talk and we can do this together. Thank you very much for coming to the event.